Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you everyone for being with us today. First of all, I would like to welcome everyone from around the globe for attending our webinar. I am Marina Wong, General Manager of GLI Asia, your host for today's webinar. I have been with GLI Asia for over five years, and I have worked with many of you on testing projects during such time. We started running webinars because of the pandemic, but in time, we find that this is a very useful way for GLI to share new and important information with our clients and friends. We put this webinar together to answer some of your pressing concerns, and we hope you'll find today's webinar interesting and illuminating. Today, we are going to talk about a random number generator, or as we usually call it, RNG. Now, I would like to introduce the GLI experts who will be sharing their RNG insights with you today. First, please welcome Nathan Jang, our GLI Asia Technical Manager. Nathan has been with GLI for more than 10 years and he is currently stationed in Macau. Nathan is a well-rounded expert on, gaming, on game testing. He is well familiar with regulatory issues and regulator standards. He has worked with many Asian clients on getting their products certified. Next up, we have Lorenzo Nardini, our senior math analyst, RNG specialist from GLI Europe. He is currently stationed in Netherlands. He has been with GLI for four years and his expertise is on RNGs. Lorenzo is well liked by his client because of his in-depth knowledge and for being responsive and proactive in working with clients. We are very pleased to have Nathan and Lorenzo with us today. Now let us go through today's agenda. We put this agenda based on years of working with our clients on RNG testing. There are issues that many clients are most concerned about. We will first talk about uh, what is RNG and how it is used in gaming. We will cover some of the most common technical issues. We understand that once you have your game ready, you want to be able to go to the market as quickly as you can, so we will explain how to expedite RNG testing. We will follow with administrative issues, such as the application process, what certifications are needed by regulators, and how to get GLI cert mark for your games. And if you still have individual questions after the webinar, you can email us and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Without further ado, let us invite Lorenzo to talk about what is RNG. Hello, hi Marina, thanks for introducing me. Uh, so pleased to be here today. So, well, a random number generator uh, is a computer system or device that provides random results for games. Uh, most countries in the world require an independent test lab such as GLI uh, to assert that the RNG is suitable for gaming applications. Here in GLI, we have a very long experience of testing RNGs and have developed also lists of requirements known as GLI standards that are accepted in many unregulated markets. Uh, when we test RNGs, we find that there are mainly three types. Uh, one category uh, known as software RNGs, also known as pseudo-random generators, PRNGs, they're based on mathematical algorithm. Maybe uh, you heard about uh, the KISS algorithm, Merchant Twister, Isaac, others. Uh, usually, they have very good performance in terms of statistics, uh, but they are deterministic since they are uh, driven by an algorithm. Uh, then there are uh, hardware RNGs. These we also call them uh, true random num number generators because their entropy is based on the mechanic uh, in, on physical phenomena that are intended to be uh, really random. So for instance, uh, photon detection, radioactive decay, and others. Uh, maybe you've heard of uh, uh, quantum devices, IDQ, Protego SG100, and others. And finally, we also test the mechanical RNGs. We call them also uh, physical randomness devices that base their entropy on uh, 
the laws of dynamics, let's say. So for instance, uh, there, uh, we can uh, test uh, uh, roulette machines, uh, ball blowers, dice shakers, and others. And finally, of course, one can have combinations of these categories of RNGs. Uh, it's not unlikely to see a combination of software and a hardware RNG where the entropy comes from the hardware uh, device and then it is processed by the software algorithm. And that's an option. I see. Let us now have Nathan to tell us uh, uh, what are the benefits of testing RNG. Thank you, Marina. I'm very excited to be here. So to answer your question, um, basically the RNG is the core of a gaming product. So I tested it and certified, uh, certified RNG can give more confidence to player who participate in the game. And in all regulated gaming market, the RNG must be tested to be approved it for the use in the jurisdictional and undergoing a lot of testing, which involves uh, source code review, software verification, uh, data connection and uh, statistical data analyze. And once all these testing has been successfully completed and we can verify the RNG is suitable for gaming applications. So Nathan, what kind of games uh, use RNG? Uh, basically all game of chance use the random number. For example, you can imagine the slot game, the virtual or physical table games or lottery and et cetera. Okay. Lorenzo, do you mind to now tell us uh, if an operator wants to test his RNG, what does he need to provide to GLI to receive a quote for testing? Uh, sure. So when we first approach a client, uh, we share with them a document, we call it uh, the RNG questionnaire, to get information uh, regarding their RNG solution their, uh, that they're planning. So this is because we want to be as accurate as possible to make a quote. And so we try to understand the information regarding uh, uh, the RNG design. So detailing, for instance, the RNG core algorithm, the platform operating system, the source code language or device, as well as the, how the random number is handled uh, for using the game. Um, and then we also need to understand information regarding the game parameters. Uh, normally, this is just the range that is required for testing and the number uh, of numbers uh, needed to form a game outcome. We call them selections, just to make it clear. For, uh, uh, for example, a roulette game might pick a single number, so a single selection, uh, from 0 to 36. Uh, 0 to 36 will be the range. Or similarly, for a Baccarat game, uh, you might pick six cards, so six selections, from 416. Well, this number is just uh, eight decks of 52 cards. Uh, and finally, of course, we also need to understand uh, uh, what are the uh, target uh, jurisdictions, target markets that the client might have in mind. Um, but in case uh, uh, the client has not a specific indication here, we can also test against uh, uh, GLI produced standards uh, intended to make it uh, then easy to later transfer the approval to other regulated or un unregulated markets. Okay, can Lorenzo please now explain to us what is the process to test an RNG? Uh, sure, I think I also prepared a slide for it. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Um, okay, so, well, the RNG analysis consists of several items, as you can see here. We start usually from source code review. Uh, if the core algorithm is implemented in the supply code, uh, we will compare it against the published references to ensure that its implementation is correct and it complies with jurisdictional requirements. Uh, if the core RNG function is built into the operating system or programming language, we will ensure that the choice of the function and functional call is appropriate for its intended use. Uh, we will also trace the handling of the RNG value from the original generation to output of fin uh, final scale value for game usage. Then, uh, well, after this is complete, uh, we pass to the next step, which is data collection and data analysis. Uh, so for each intended game usage, a large set of final outcome data will be collected and tested with several specialized uh, statistical tests intended to focus on issues that may impact the game return, odds, fairness, or predictability. Uh, we may also collect a set of raw output that we then pass to specific batteries of tests. 
And once these two steps, so it's code review and data collection are done, this is the core part of testing. We then pass to the software verification because typically the RNG code is compiled before use. So the RNG will be identified in GLI report by digital checksum, or we call them signatures, uh, of these compiled files. So the signature is then used by regulators to verify that the RNG in use matches the RNG that was tested. We will either conduct a compile directly or witness the client perform a, a compilation of the code, uh, verifying the source code files before compiling and possibly identifying the output uh, by digital signatures. And finally, well, once this is done, testing is basically complete. We just pass to drafting the report and summarizing there all our findings. And that's all. <laughs> I see, Lorenzo. Can you now give us more some ideas on uh, what are the most frequent potential problems from an RNG testing? Um, yeah, we, we see several. Uh, in our experience, we usually uh, uh, see issues in implementing the core algorithm. So for instance, uh, uh, if the chosen core algorithm um, is not good, uh, is not a good, very well uh, performance, uh, we may see some, uh, some uh, bad results uh, from the statistical data analysis. This is my, uh, might be needed because it's uh, either not seeded properly or not properly implemented. Then another issue that uh, it's, uh, we see very often is the so-called scaling bias. So that is the transformation of the raw output of the RNG from the algorithm to the final intended range for the games. And actually for this one, since it's so very important, I prepared a slide that I want to show you. Here it is. So, well, usually algorithms output data in 32 or 64 bit format. Maybe you heard of these numbers and then for uh, when you need to use them for game, you need to map them down to a smaller range. So in this example, of course, I don't have a line that is longer to do the power 32, uh, but um, just picture that uh, uh, for the sake of this example, the numbers, uh, the row output here are those uh, in, in this line above between zero and 99. So we have only 100 numbers and we want to map them to the lower range zero to 36, so a range of 37, uh, because probably we want to use these numbers to detect, uh, to, to form outcomes for a roulette game. So usually the standard approach to do this uh, that we see many times is just taking uh, the remainder in the integer division of uh, the number from the line above divided by 37. And if you do this operation, you see that uh, some numbers uh, below namely the numbers between zero and 25, uh, receive uh, three inputs from above, while those from 26 to 36 uh, receive only two. And this is mainly because uh, 100 is not a multiple of 37. So you see, if this operation is not um, done carefully, some numbers are more likely to appear than others. And this is, of course, is an issue when <laughs> uh, using this type of algorithm for a game where fairness is needed. Uh, then, other than scaling bias, we have also we see also issues uh, pertaining game suitability. Well, here it's because the RNG should be able to produce all possible outcomes uh, for the intended gaming applications. An issue can arise here in case the seeding is not properly performed, or if there is not enough random entropy passed uh, to the random to, to the RNG algorithm. Uh, next, um, let me think, well, of course, there are issues uh, regarding cryptographic security. Many regulated markets require the RNG to be cryptographically strong, in addition to be able to pass statistical tests. This means it should be unfeasible for a knowledgeable attacker to predict the RNG next outcomes uh, using current technology, of course. Meeting this requirement and at the same time ensuring suitability for gaming application is not always easy to achieve. And finally, even when the RNG is not required to be cryptographically strong, it must typically meet other unpredictability requirements. For example, some markets require a procedure called background cycling, uh, where RNG values are discarded in between the times they are actually used for game outcomes. 
And so the RNG may fail testing if this required functionality is not implemented or if it is implemented incorrectly. Well, Nathan, uh, let's say we have already had an RNG tested for one game usage. Can we apply it to another game uh, without additional testing? If not, why? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, in general, you can't uh, apply a previous certificate directly to a new usage. Many RNG, they have a random light behavior, but they are not uh, in the real case. They follow a specific algorithm to generate one number after another. So the RNG testing makes sure that the output uh, behavior behaves uh, randomly for the intended usage. Uh, but however, if you already have an RNG testing done before and updating your RNG to including additional game usage is a lesser effort and cost than a new RNG evaluation. Let's go to an, the next question, Lorenzo. Uh, can you tell us our audience, uh, how can we make the testing faster? Um, yes. So, well, if you're a client, do you want us to, to make the testing as fast as possible? This is, of course, clearly understandable. Uh, the first advice is just to let us know as, uh, as early as you can about any strict deadline you might have, and then we can <laughs> um, plan our capacity accordingly. Other than this, of course, uh, you can give us information and help us in uh, understanding the RNG. So, for instance, if the RNG is encapsulated separately, from the rest of the system, then reviewing the code is way easier and faster. Uh, so if the RNG is embedded within, uh, well, if the RNG is embedded within a large system, uh, you can always assist us, letting us know where to find the specific information that pertaining to the RNG code. So for instance, uh, writing a, a good documentation, um, a, a good RNG description. Next, uh, let me think, since a large portion of the RNG test uh, consists of data collection, uh, then, uh, you know, we always ask clients to, be, to give us, uh, to provide us with what we call the data collection tool. That is a way for us to collect data using the RNG solution. So, of course, the, the faster this tool is, the better and the faster it will be our, our testing overall. And finally, also uh, verifying, regarding verifying and identifying the system, if in, uh, implementing a compiled language, uh, we will also be able to compile the code or, as I told uh, previously, witness a, a source code compilation, verifying the digital signatures after this is done. So we advised to set up a, remo a remote environment to allow us to supervise the build of the RNG and always make sure that the image is consistent and verifiable via digital signatures. Hmm. Then should we separate the RNG module from the rest of the system? Lorenzo and Nathan, what are your views? <clears throat> well, as I was mentioning, it's not uh, strictly required, but in general it's preferable because, well, first of all, because it makes us faster to perform in the test as I was just answering before, but uh, also, uh, if, um, since the RNG certificate includes these digital, digital signatures of the RNG module, having this as a standalone report uh, allows then the client to update other portions of uh, their game uh, without requiring the RNG certificate also to be updated with the new signatures. And also, this also, other than saving time, also saves money. I don't know, Nathan, do you think the same? Yes, I, I agree with you, Lorenzo. Uh, we have seen in some cases that when game software and, and the RNG are combined together, it affects the verification procedure of the RNG when the game software is updated. Even uh, the RNG remains unchanged. Ah, that is important. Lorenzo, what if I want the RNG to be tested for a lot of different game usages? Mm. Well, this is something that uh, we see quite often, either because the client has not decided on a full list of games or because there are so many that a different approach can be considered. Uh, what we do is to perform general testing. So given information about the intended use, uh, so maximum range, maximum number of selections, uh, if these are with or without replacements, then we will prepare specific test plans uh, covering multiple uh, game parameters uh, and, and testing all the possible uh, parameters in between. So 
although the price for general testing is higher uh, because we need this additional effort to test all the possible combinations, uh, the value to the customer is higher because then um, they would not need to retest uh, the RNG as long the, as this application, uh, their application stays between the parameters tested. So, of course, also an advice to clients here uh, to keep the, uh, the testing cost down. Do not uh, request a more extensive certification than what you think you will need. Here is another question for you, Lorenzo. What RNG algorithm or device should we use? <laughs> nice question. Nice try, Marina. But unfortunately, I cannot really answer this question uh, because, uh, you know, we are an independent test lab here in July, so we don't, do not make any recommendations on specific algorithms or devices. However, if you are uncertain about what to use, we always recommend considering a cryptographically strong algorithm or device, as this provides uh, you with the best assurance that your solution will be able to be certified in the greatest number of uh, regulated markets. Most modern computer languages and operating systems provide uh, cryptographic RNGs ready for use. So it might no, not even be that difficult. Actually, just be careful. Uh, we never recommend uh, the client to attempt to write their own RNG core algorithm, since this is a, a task that we think is always best left to RNG experts. Here is one more question for you, Lorenzo, on physical devices. What if I have a physical device like a ball blower, dice shaker, or card shuffler? Can it be tested? Yeah, sure, uh, can be tested, of course. In fact, it's one of the three types of RNGs that I introduced at the beginning of this webinar. And uh, much of the testing is similar to working with software or hardware RNGs. However, the physical data collection can be a mar much larger portion of the timeline, as you may expect. Uh, the exact testing scope will depend on several factors, including whether the device supports any automated data collection or recording, and whether the device makes use of a software or hardware RNG to completely determine the physical outcome. This is something that we typically see, for instance, for some uh, car shufflers. Um, when the clients submit a product like this, we always um, ask to clearly identify any required procedure during initial setup. So for instance, calibration of the device or balancing uh, and during operation. So if there is any periodic maintenance or cleaning that is needed. And then we will collect data accordingly in a way that uh, reasonably mimics this live usage. Hi, Nathan. Will uh, RNG certificate expire? Mm, in general, no, but uh, based on our understanding, there are some regulated markets uh, such as Denmark, Sweden, uh, Italy, that request the RNG report to be reissued periodically. And also some uh, regulated jurisdiction may change or update their rule from time to time, which may eventually lead to a lead for updating the, the testing. And Nathan, how can the public recognize that an RNG was tested by GLI? Um, the public can recognize that through the GLI shirt mark or, and the GLI logo. Uh, one more question for you, Nathan. Before a product can go to the market, what kind of certificate do we need? Uh, if you know what regulated market you will pay, you, you will be placing your uh, games in, then that GI knows, and we will make sure your RNG test uh, are properly. Uh, most European market request their own report to be issued, so that testing an RNG uh, for many jurisdictions may result in a report uh, for each one of them. Uh, but if you are not sure yet, but want to go ahead and get some testing standard done, uh, then ask for the testing against. GI standard, GI11 is for the uh, land-based gaming, such as the slot machine, and GI19 is mainly for the uh, online gaming. The RNG requirements are very similar between these two, and they are both decided so that your RNG can be transferred to a large amount of uh, regulated market, leading maybe little or no additional testing. Hmm. Uh, if we have the RNG tested on GLI19, does that mean we can use it globally? Lorenzo, please advise and thanks. Uh, sure. Um, well, 
What you need to know is for sure that regulated markets, for regulated markets, the RNG should be tested against the proper standard requirement. Some jurisdictions may accept Agiline certification directly, but most will require the RNG that is, uh, to be certified against uh, their specific requirement. However, I agree with what uh, Nathan was previously saying. Uh, since July 19 uh, is a um, very comprehensive uh, uh, list of RNG requirements and others, uh, it overlaps well with uh, the requirements of many of these regulated uh, markets and thus transferring the te a testing done under July 19 to then any other regulated markets uh, is usually very easy, sometimes even just paperwork, you know. Uh, let's now get back to the RNG certificate. Nathan, can you explain to us on what is the process to apply for GLI RNG certificate? Uh, yes, if you are our new client, the first thing to do is to uh, through the due diligence. As, uh, GLI can only provide a proposal to our approved uh, submitter. Our CSR will send you a GRI new client form. Uh, please complete it and return with your company registration for our legal approval. After the due diligence through, uh, please fill out the RNG questionnaire. Our math team will depend on the RNG questionnaire document to generate a proposal for your review and consideration. Uh, the testing can be started after we receive the signed proposal and uh, deposit payment, if any. Uh, let's now talk a bit on RNG testing, Lorenzo. How long will RNG testing take? So, well, this depends, of course, on the scope of work and type. Uh, usually, we consider between uh, four and six uh, business weeks from the moment we receive the project materials to the, uh, the moment when we deliver the final report to the client. That's all. Uh, regarding course, Nathan, what about course? How much for one time first pass RNG evaluation? Uh, our RNG testing is tailor made. It depends on the scope of work uh, which can provide it to us. But uh, in most cases, uh, it will be between 7,000 US dollar to 15,000 yeah, US dollar. And where is your math team, Nathan? Uh, they're mainly located in Europe uh, and USA. Uh -huh. I see. Uh, Lorenzo, now let's get back to the testing process. If we cannot go through the first pass of testing, what can we do? So um, if issues are found in the RNG implementation that prefer, prevent a, a certificate to be issued, then we will notify the customer as soon as possible, of course. Uh, the client will then be able to address these issues and resubmit for another testing pass. Uh, we will present a project uh, change notice, in short form PCN, uh, for the additional testing effort required by our math team. Our policy is to notify clients as early as we can uh, about any issues, so to save them for on these uh, retesting costs. Lorenzo, we have got another question on testing. Mm -hmm. Can we change or update testing material during testing progress? Well, yes, this can be done, but uh, generally this will add both time and cost to the project. So, of course, if this happens, we will review this update and present uh, a PCN again, uh, as previously described. Uh, this is, but I think it is generally best to finalize the implementation within reason, of course, before submitting to GLI, so to avoid any extra cost and delays. Let us now talk about administrative issues. Nathan, can GLI RNG letter be transferred from one company to another? Uh, yes, uh, we have letter transfer service to transfer the GLI letter from company A to company B or even more. Uh, but please note that uh, all companies uh, must be the GLI approved submitter. And this uh, service charge around uh, US dollar 1000 per letter. I see, Nathan. Then how to apply for the GLI cert mark? Uh, you can submit the gaming lab certificate mark online application form after the testing complete. But uh, please note that this mark can only be applied for the product test against standards such as uh, GI 19, GI 11, or other European jurisdictions just like uh, Alphamed or UK. One more question on cert mark, Nathan. Is there any additional price to apply for a GLI cert mark? Uh, no, that, uh, that is free of charge. 
The last question for you and Nathan, here is another common concern. Will the GLI cert mark expire? Uh, no, but our QMS will contact you uh, once a year to see if you need or you want to renew the cert mark. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, I am afraid this is all the time we have for today's webinar. Thank you all for being with us today. Again, if you have any questions, please email us. We will get back to you as soon as we can. We are happy to see you all at our webinar, but we much prefer to see you face to face in the not too distant future. Meanwhile, stay safe, keep healthy and remain strong. The pandemic has indeed given us new perspective of how to live, how we work and how we play. We hope everyone has gained some useful insights and will be able to find some innovative ways to increase your revenue. Before you go, please fill in the assessment and we are offering complimentary consultation to everyone who responded. We will post the link on the chat board. Finally, thank you everyone for attending our webinar. GLI is here to help. Stay safe and we will see each other very, very soon. Thank you.